Christina Abavana, a neurologist and sleep medicine physician at the Hartford Healthcare Air Neuroscience Institute. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Well, a lot of people suffer from this, and when we talk about it, we're actually talking about about 20 million Americans. So tell us exactly what this is. So we can talk about sleep apnea, obstructive sleep apnea, by thinking of natural breathing. When we breathe, we move air from the nose to the throat, also known as the upper airway, and down into the lungs. When we're awake, these, we have muscles that keep that upper airway open. However, when we go to sleep, these muscles relax. Now, in individuals who have obstructive sleep apnea, they have more crowding in their upper airways. Their upper airways are easily collapsible. And so when they go to sleep and the muscles relax, they have obstruction. They have more narrowing in that airway, which um, limits airflow and causes a drop in their oxygen levels at night. And that's why snoring um, can be a sign of obstructive sleep apnea. Think of snoring as air vibrating in the airway because it's meeting resistance, resistance to airflow in, in that throat area. What are some of the other signs of sleep apnea aside from snoring? So aside from snoring, uh, people will often have fragmented sleep, non-restorative sleep, excessive daytime sleepiness, even if they've slept adequate amount of time at night. And the reason for that is obstructive sleep apnea causes a fragmented sleep, poor quality sleep. Okay. Um, and so these are some signs of obstructive sleep apnea. Also, um, nocturnal episodes of gasping for air, choking for air are signs of obstructive sleep apnea. What are the risks of developing obstructive sleep apnea? So we know that male gender is a risk. Men tend to have more obstructive sleep apnea than women. However, as women, when we age and our hormones change, after menopause, our risk equals that of men. Also, being overweight is a risk factor. However, not everyone who is overweight has obstructive sleep apnea, and not everyone with obstructive sleep apnea is overweight. Also, the structure of the airway, the anatomy of an individual's airway is a risk factor. I guess our last question here today, why is it important to treat obstructive sleep apnea and how exactly is it diagnosed? Maybe when you catch those signs, maybe they come mm -hmm. visit you. Right. So we know that um, obstructive sleep has consequences. There are immediate consequences and long-term consequences. So immediate consequences are the daytime symptoms, the um, excessive sleepiness during the day, um, the nighttime symptoms of fragmented sleep. But there are long-term consequences. We know that obstructive sleep apnea is a risk factor for heart disease, for, for stroke, and even for metabolic disease um, like diabetes. Also, if you're sleeping during the day, you're prone to accidents and injury. And we can diagnose obstructive sleep apnea uh, by a consultation with a sleep medicine physician and a sleep study can definitively diagnose an individual with obstructive sleep apnea. Excellent. Dr. Abhavana, thank you so much for all that information and for joining us today. It's a pleasure. And we'll be right back after a short break.